Hey guys, it's Bub here, and in this video we have hands on with the Windows 11 Insider Preview Build 22000. Last week this build was released to insiders inside of the developer channel in the Windows Insider program, and in this video we'll be taking a look at basically everything new and really having a hands on and showing off these new features introduced in this official build of Windows 11. Let's just go ahead and start off with the desktop. This desktop looks almost identical to the one that was seen in the leaked build. The start menu is exactly the same, with the all apps still showing up like that, and all of our pinned and recommended apps still showing up there. So nothing has changed here. In the Windows 11 event, there was a little search bar at the top of the start menu that is not in this insider build. And in the event, a lot of the UI elements looked more glassy than they do here. Maybe that's coming in a future update. As for the taskbar, things look pretty much the same, except you can't move the taskbar icons to the left side. They are forced in the middle, so you can't move them over. There's no option for that. Over here is where we start to see some changes. For starters, our notification tray is, this is our notifications. Our quick actions and our notifications are no longer combined. Instead, notifications like this show up above our calendar, so they don't show up above our quick toggles. Our quick toggles have moved here. So here we can control our Wi-Fi, our Bluetooth, airplane mode, nightlight, alarms, accessibility, and we can add more features like our connect, keyboard, mobile hotspot, sharing, and our project option. That just adds another layer right there. So overall, it's a very weird, different thing. It's gonna take a while to get used to. However, I do believe this is a great improvement. Sound is also right here. It is combined here. So pretty much all those tray icons for sound and Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, they've all been combined into one, which, I mean, that's not necessarily a bad thing. Our desktop itself has the new icon for the recycle bin. However, there are new right-click menus. Yes, new right-click menus that weren't even seen in the leaked build. So we can see that this doesn't really have all the options that the old one did. They're technically still adding them. To view the old right-click menu, just click show more options and it brings it up. I really prefer this new one as it adds more spacing in between things, which is more optimized for touch. However, the old one still is more familiar and has more features. Right clicking on a file, such as Microsoft Edge, we can see things are again different. Our cut, our copy, our rename, and our delete are all little icons at the top. So instead of going down and selecting one of these to delete a file, we'll just have to go all the way up there and delete it. Our search button is the same search that we saw in the leaked build. Nothing has really changed. It's really all the same. Since we're signed into an official Microsoft account, in this build I can show you the widgets. These widgets look extremely similar to the ones that are seen in macOS Big Sur and macOS Monterey. They even have the same squarish rectangular design, and they're a little bit different, obviously customized for Microsoft. Now I have played a few games on Windows 11, and honestly I can say that gaming performance is about the same. The performance difference between Windows 10 and Windows 11 is not really noticeable. There's a little bit of a performance difference, in, which is better, but it's not that noticeable. So overall the claim that Microsoft is maximizing throughput and CPU performance is relatively true, but relatively false. It's about 50-50, nothing really changed in this build. When you download the Insider build, for some reason the new store isn't actually included. You have to wait about an hour for the store to actually update itself, but once it updates, I believe it's totally worth it. The store has been totally overhauled, and honestly, I like it a lot. There's still some things that need polished, but overall this is a very clean and very minimalistic look that I love a lot. It kind of reminds me a lot of an Ubuntu app store, um, which is for good or for bad, depending on who you ask. As for Android app support. I cannot find any Android apps in this store, probably because it's not ready yet, but I can't find any. So if we take a look at just TikTok, Googling TikTok, first off, nothing even shows up for some reason. I guess this one is glitched, but this TikTok right here is simply the Microsoft Edge extension. This app requires the latest version of Edge, so it's an extension, not the actual Android app from the Amazon store. The settings app has also gotten a much needed overhaul. If you don't remember, the settings app in the previous version of Windows was not that great. It was actually a little bit confusing to use for some people, but this one is much better. We have all of our options that were previously seen on the left side, and then the entire right side is used for the actual content of each setting. So if we want to personalize, of course we go to personalization, 
And here we can select themes, which were something that really didn't exist in Windows 10. They were had them in Windows 7, but now they're back. We can also install themes here, so we can go ahead and browse themes on the Microsoft Store. So overall, especially Windows Update has gotten the biggest overhaul. I feel like the Windows Update in Windows 10 was a little bit hard for your average computer user to use. However, this one, it explains things in a much better manner. It's really just a UI overhaul, but it just looks better and I feel like it would be much easier for people who don't know what they're doing to use this Windows update. Overall, things in Windows 11 are much, much, much more colorful and overall they're just better. Unfortunately, with this version, we did not get the redesigned file explorer that we all wanted. It has the new icons which were seen in a previous build of Windows 10, an insider build. However, that's not, that's really it. Of course, we do have those new icons for copy, cut, paste, and share. However, there's really nothing important here. For one thing I do want to point out is the return of arrow. If we remember in Windows 7, the top bar was all arrow, and we could see through it. And this bar right here sort of reminds me of Windows arrow. It's not as transparent, and it's not as skinny as it was. However, it still looks very good, and even if, if we maximize it, it kind of stays, kind of doesn't, but overall it reminds me a lot of Windows Arrow and I'm glad to see the return of it. This Arrow is not seen in Microsoft Edge though, which is kind of a bummer, but I believe it is still seen in every standard Windows app. Unfortunately, Control Panel still exists. Control Panel still has references to Windows 7 under Backup and Restore, and I feel like Microsoft really needs to axe Control Panel. It's time. They've been trying to get rid of it since Windows 8, and it's been eight years since Windows 8, and it's time to just get rid of it. With the new overhaul with the settings app, everything in control panel is already in the settings app. It's really time to completely axe this. Although they did redesign new icons for control panel, which is something I don't understand when they could have simply just got rid of it completely. Now, let's talk about compatibility again for a minute. Windows 11's hardware requirements are absolutely absurd. It requires Secure Boot and UEFI, which I guess is okay, but it's really axing the support for a lot of legacy BIOS systems that could actually handle Windows 11 very well, which is just simply creating more e-waste, forcing people to buy new computers. It requires 64 GB of storage, which is understandable, most computers have that nowadays. And TPM 2.0 is a requirement. TPM 2.0 is basically a security chip, and it really reduces the chance of getting malware, which is obviously a good thing. A lot of older computers don't have it, which is really going to end support for them. However, for Microsoft to issue manufacturers a OEM license, TPM was a requirement since 2013. So chances are your computer has a TPM, it's just disabled. To check, all you have to do is go to the Run dialog and type tpm.msc and run it. Here we'll see if we have TPM. My computer obviously has TPM 2.0, so we're good on that end. However, another crazy thing I found out is there are now processor requirements, including the fact that you can't run Windows 11 on a processor from Intel that is not 8th, 9th, 10th, or 11th gen. So basically, Microsoft has said that 8th gen or newer is required on the Intel side, which I find a little bit weird. My Surface Pro, which is only about three years old, is, has a 7th gen M3 inside of it. And it said in the settings app that it was not compatible. I was still able to update to Windows 11 through the Windows update in the dev channel. And honestly, Windows 11 runs significantly better than Windows 10 did on the Surface Pro. However, I find it a little bit weird that Microsoft is asking for these insane hardware requirements. Personally, using this operating system since it came out, I feel like it's significantly faster, and it's smoother, and it's quicker, and it doesn't really come with all the bloatware that it used to. There's no Candy Crush, there's no any of that. Now, of course, this is Windows 11 Pro, so maybe the home version does come with that. There are new sounds in Windows 11, as I pointed out last week. However, I'm sure you've all heard them by now. However, these are a great improvement, and they really remind me of Windows 8. So just take a look at the taskbar for a minute. When we open stuff, it pops up, which is actually really nice, and when we close stuff, it slides back. Microsoft has really paid a ton of attention to the detail with the taskbar and the start menu, so if we just open mail, we can see everything slide over. We open calendar, it slides over again, 
and we open the store that was already in the taskbar so nothing actually happens settings everything slides over again and we close it it all slides right back which is honestly really cool and i'm really glad microsoft has paid this much attention to detail and so that is windows 11. The leaked build was significantly less full of features than this official build, which is obviously something that's going to happen. However, I really love Windows 11. I can't wait to see what it comes out of it. The official release, which is holiday 2021, is going to be a very crazy time as many people are going to want to upgrade to Windows 11 and their computers may not even support it. But overall, I'm very excited to see what happens with Windows 11, and I'm very excited to see the final product. I'll be providing Windows 11 updates through my YouTube channel, so please continue to watch and subscribe if you're new around here, as I'll be doing these kinds of updates on the new builds. And with that being said, I'll see you all in the next one.